lessons, we learn about the ideal gas law, which is equal to PV equal to nRT. Now, based on the R constant, we can go back to the periodic table, and we are going to look at the one with mole, temperature, volume, and pressure. And the only one that has that value is the R constant equal to 0 0.08206. And is in the unit of liter time ATM, and that is being divided by mole and Kelvin. And based on the unit of the R constant, which is given to you on the back side of your periodic table, now we know that the unit for temperature must be in Kelvin, the unit for N must be in mole, which is the number of mole, and volume must be in liter, pressure must be in ATM. Okay? Well, today we are going to look at how is the ideal gas law relate to the density of the gas as well as the molar mass of the gas. Now, if we find the molar mass of the sample, we can use the periodic table to determine the identity of the gas. So let's go back and look at this. We have two things, density and molar mass. Well, what do we know about density so far? Well, density is equal to mass over volume. And that's given to us on the back side of the periodic table as well. And then we also, right on top of it, we also know that given to us, mole is equal to mass divided by molar mass. And if you don't remember this, this right here. What is the conversion factor for molar mass? Molar mass is the number of mass in gram, is the mass in gram divided by mole. And all we have to do is just bring this down and bring this up. And that's how you get mole equal to mass divided by molar mass. Now, if we look at all three of this equation, can we substitute in what we know? Well, first of all, this n can be substituted in here. So now we have PV equal to mass divided by molar mass times RT. Well, the goal is to find the molar mass, right? So in this case, I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to bring this two down. Basic math right there. So now I have my molar mass equal to what? Well, if I bring that down, molar mass now is equal to mass time RT divided by, if we bring this two down, it's equal to, if we bring this two down, we have PV on the bottom. And that's pretty much it. So can we substitute in anything else? Well, look at this. This mass and volume, what is that equal to? That is density right there. So this is equal to density. So let's rewrite this in terms of density. Now we're going to have density time RT divided by P. And that will give us molar mass. So know this equation and know how to manipulate the equation so that you can find the density of the substance or the molar mass of the substance using the ideal gas law. So let's apply a new equation with density to find the molar mass of a substance. And in this case, determine the molar mass for a sample of gas with a density of 2 gram per liter, and that has to be the right unit, it has to be in liter, at 1 atm and 265 kelvin. So let's plug this in. We have the density equal to 2, that's easy, and the R constant, again, is the same one, 0 0.08206, and multiply by the temperature, which is in this case 265 kelvin. And divide by 1 atm, which is the pressure right there. Now let's plug this into our calculator. And what we have here is 43.49. And how do I know these are the unit of molar mass? Well, molar mass is always defined as the number of gram per one mole of that substance. Now be careful. Why is that? Well, think about it. Are all the gas in this whole entire world exists on the periodic table, what about oxygen? What about carbon dioxide? Those are gas, those are molecules. So this could be a density of a molecule. So if, in order to determine the density of this sample gas, we need to compare it to a chemical formula or a list of chemical formula given to us. And sometimes, if they ask you to go to the periodic table, you will find one of them on the periodic table. But in most cases, you will compare this to the molar mass from a list of chemical formula. 
in order to determine which of the chemical from the list is your sample gas.